Welcome to whiskey.com. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. Today we have a Springbank Gaia Barolo whiskey, cask strength with 54.7 ABV, but quite young, with an age of nine years, distilled in 2004, bottled in 2013. This is a quite rare bottle. There's a limited amount of bottles worldwide of about 11,000 bottles. And on the label of this Springbank bottle is a lot of information, more than on a typical bottle. Um, <clears throat> cask type. We have a finishing or a double maturation, four years in refill bourbon casks. So refill bourbon will not result in a lot of aromas moving into the whiskey and five years in fresh Gaia Barolo casks. Gaia Barolo, you know Gaia Barolo? No, uh, it's a wine from Tuscany, from Italy, and the family of Gaia uh, moved in the, in the 17th century from Spain to Italy and founded uh, this wine, yeah, wine yard or uh, um, this chateau, <laughs> chateau is French, uh, and Castello in Ita Italian language. Um, and there they are uh, planting uh, as well Barolo uh, grapes as well as Barbaresco. So there are two Gaia uh, red wines on the market, the Barolo and the Barbaresco. And the Gaia wine. Uh, Wines are very, very famous and very, very expensive. So you're able to, to pay a few hundred euros or dollars or whatever uh, for a bottle. And they are in the same range as the uh, Mouton Rothschild or the uh, Champagne Crook. So quite expensive casks, uh, wines from those casks. And the casks are used for barrique maturation of the wine to transfer the oakiness of the casks into the wine and bring more uh, complexity and aromas into the wine. And after the barrique casks are used for uh, the wine maturation, then the casks are going to Scotland and uh, the whiskey from the uh, refill bourbon casks is transferred into this fresh Gaia Barolo casks and they take over as well the oakiness from the staves of the cask itself from the oak as well as uh, the taste from the wine. There is in a cask perhaps two liters into the porous uh, structure of the wood uh, which the whiskey, the alcohol of the whiskey, will ex extract into the whiskey. So, distilled in February 2004 and bottled in October 2013, 11,000 bottles out turn uh, and 54.7 volume percent. Um, on the back label, Springbank, this is a bottle out of the series of the wood expressions. There are a uh, are a lot of different bottles from different uh, woods maturing uh, the Springbank whiskey. And here they tell a little bit about that. Uh, Springbank is unique among, among Scotland's distilleries. Every part of the process from malting to bottling is carried out at the distillery. Uh, very rare that such uh, complete manufacturing inside the distillery happens today. Uh, the whiskies in the wood expressions range are free of artificial coloring and are not chill filtered. This will cause in slight natural haze to form when the whiskey is cold, but this will disappear when the temperature returns to normal. Uh, there is also additional information on the box on the back. Springbank Distillery is the oldest family-owned distillery in Scotland. Uh, very few people know that all these uh, single brands of the whiskies in Scotland, uh, most of them belong to the mega companies worldwide, the big, big corporations. 
um, and seven or eight of these big corporations own 90% of all Scottish distilleries. Uh, only a dozen uh, belong, still belong to families and there are a few new built distilleries which do not belong to those mega companies. Um, the Mitchells, Scotland's senior distilling family, opened the distillery in 1828 on the site of the previous illicit distillery of Archibald Mitchell. Yeah, there were several phases uh, in the time uh, in Scotland uh, when the uh, distillation became legal. So you have to uh, uh, to get a, a license for distilling, pay. Uh, taxes on the size of the of the still because you they weren't able to measure how much whiskey you produced so on the size of the still and then you produced like hell to get most through the distil distillation process through the stills uh, for uh, dividing uh, the tax uh, on as many bottles as possible so quality went down today uh, whiskey is taxed on a bottle so you can take a lot more of time to produce a good whiskey. Um, <clears throat> Springbank is the only distillery in Scotland to distill uh, and bottle three different single malts. Springbank, as seen here, Longrow and Hazelburn. Hazelburn is triple distilled. String Springbank has three stills. And it's still in the first. The output goes to the second. And the output goes to the third. And then into the cask for maturation. Longrow is only distilled twice, but it uses very smoky barley. And Springbank uh, has a very slight uh, smoky aroma in it and is distilled two and a half times. Uh, how is that working? Well, they mix whiskey from two distillations and three distillations together to form this Springbank whiskey and they have a little bit of smokiness in the barley, so you get a lot of different aromas into this bottle. Um, it is also unique amongst Scotland's distilleries in that all parts of the production process, from traditional malting to bottling, are carried out at the one location. There are still some distilleries in Scotland which produce uh, their own barley, but uh, typically only a small percentage and Springbank produces, for my wisdom, uh, the complete barley for the process. And therefore, for this lot of manual work in the final product, it typically costs 10 to 15 euros or dollars more than a comparable bottle from a different distillery. This is. Uh, for the manual work of the people. Ah, a very, very good, good cork. I very rarely have seen such a good cork. Uh, it looks like, like plastic, but it's, it's a real cork. You can see the structure on it. So, hand-selected cork. Manual work for the cork as well. the first sniff on the whiskey. There's smoke in the aroma. Not much. Six, seven, eight ppm. The smoke is measured in ppm and the highest whiskies which are bottled in huge amounts have around 40 to 45 ppm. Uh, there are very few going up to 100 or 160 uh, but this one is a very slightly smoked whisky with 6 or 7 or 8 ppm smoke in the barley. The aroma is different to other Scotch whiskies. There is a an oakiness directly in the front and a, 
untypical. Aroma, the oakiness, well, I'm used to, but behind that there's a different aroma. I'm not able to, to tell you in, in detail what it is. It's, it's like a It's like a soil. If you take the soil from a, from a forest, damp, wet, take a smell from it. This remembers me of the soil in the forest. And the slight fruitiness in it, not too much. And a little bit of seaweed very far, very far away. Oh, ha! I have to tell you, I typically do not taste whiskey with more than 50 ABV, 100 proof, US proof. So I always dilute the whiskey with a little bit of still water to bring the whiskey just down uh, below the 50 ABV. Uh, with this dilution, uh, additional aromas uh, will be able to move outside the whiskey and evaporate and, uh, uh, well, significantly more aroma derived from the cask. oakiness, smoke, but I'm missing, I'm missing the fruitiness. It's, it's weird, it's, it's, it's no typical whiskey. From time to time a little sweetiness arises, but is carried away with the oakiness. And strange spices like yeah, curry, kukuma. Strong ugliness, a little peppery, and then again the sea, seaweed, licorice, licorice. So I don't know if I find this whiskey good or not. <laughs> I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, so, if you find this bottle, be aware that this is a different kind of whiskey. This is a very untypical for Springbank. Springbank belongs to one of my favorite brands <coughs> in the Scotch whiskies. Licorice again, licorice. Uh, but this one is different. I imagined to have this red wine aroma from a good Barolo and the the dark chocolate from a from a cask. Uh, no, <laughs> not this one. So thank you for watching. Uh, have a look around if these bottles, only eleven thousand worldwide, are available in your neighborhood, and uh, stay tuned for whiskey.com. Thank you very much. <laughs>